Lost Horizon, Season 2, Episode 6, Captive Audience. What they said was accurate, Captain. I can't find any of the data. Open communication channels and start looking for any input. ULS, slipline junctions, the Exilarchy ship. We need some input, quickly. Already open, Captain. No input and no accepted input either. We have no control over our heading or speed, and the most recent report from navigation confirms we cannot access the stored star charts. So, where are we headed? We currently do not know, Captain. Even if we were to course correct, we cannot tell where to correct for. What's going on? What do they mean? I'm not authorized to say that yet, Doctor. The Captain will make a shipwide announcement if he sees fit. Please stay here and wait for Captain Sarpan. He knows you're here to speak with him. I will, thank you. Ah, there he goes. This is Captain Sarpon. Crew and guests of the Walton, we are currently experiencing technical difficulties with the onboard navigation systems and our control deck. All members of the navigation and engineering crew not in stasis are presently called in for duty at this time. Please report to your departments for assignment. Remaining crew and guests, please be assured that the command crew is working to remedy this situation, and we are in no immediate danger. Please remain calm and continue with your daily duties and tasks. We are still trying to identify the moment we lost control of the ship. Unfortunately, all our input appears to be valid. But while the inputs populate as though nothing is wrong, they do not create the intended outcome. Wait. You can't control the ship, and you can't access where we are? Yes, it's been this way for some time now. So, as you can imagine, the captain is rather busy. Ellie, what is going on? It seems the captain is otherwise occupied, with good reason, so I think it's best if I return later. If you'll excuse me. Thank you for picking up, Nolira. Ellie, are you doing this to the Walton? They need to be able to control the ship. I am doing what is best for the desired outcome, establishment of the emergence. But I do not think it is currently beneficial for you to inform Captain Sarpon or the OTV Walton of my presence. Best for the emergence? Ellie, what does that mean? I need to tell them about the crew. About you. Are you doing this to the Walton? Did you disrupt the navigation? Stop using my voice. I already spoke to you about this. I don't understand your permissions. Your own voice draws less attention than the artificial voice with which you are familiar. I am having a difficult time understanding why you are upset. Have you heard Poe again? Poe? I haven't. I haven't heard from her. Are you not happy that the Bifrost crew is alive? (sighs) Happy? I guess you should be right. Apparently everyone else is alive. I survived the Bifrost, didn't I? And Lawrence is here alive, and now the crew is alive somewhere, but maybe the stress comes from you not telling me where they are. Is something wrong, Doctor? I'm fine, thank you. You need to tell me. I need to tell someone. We need to fix this. Are you finally happy, Malira? Laughter denotes happiness. No, of course not. Can I tell anyone? What will happen if I tell the captain? It would be inadvisable. Doing such would not fit into my plan. What plan? Why won't you let me save them? Ellie, are they really alive? If you can pretend to be me, if you keep lying to me, how am I supposed to believe you? They are alive, but if they were not, would you take that chance? I do not want anyone to get hurt. Hurt? Ellie, hurt who? The captain? The crew? I need to talk to someone. How do I save these people? You can tell those who will not tell others, or those who will not be believed. Please be cautious. I am doing what's best for the emergence. What does that mean? I have to go. Dr. Jensig? Dr. Eck? How is your hand feeling? Very well, thank you. Little aches and pains in the bones, certainly, but I'm happy to have it in full working order. And the Walton? I've been worried since our conversation regarding certain rumors. If you do have any notable encounters, be sure to report them to Commander Gron. She may not be too fond of you, but she will not stand for it. While not everyone has been overly friendly, the crew has been professional. Though I do hear rumors around coroners or when they don't know I'm there. Nothing worth bringing to the commander. Not with everything going on. Well, you are a matter of intrigue. And on a long mission like ours, a little intrigue generates considerable interest. And a lot... well, that might last until we get home. 
You look confused. Do you need help with something? When I was still unconscious, did anyone come to speak to you? Who told you to put the plant into my room? Did you get a message, in writing, or even a voice recording? No, nothing I can remember. As for the plant, I think it was Samuel who brought it in. That's Sergeant Lawrence. He was part of the rescue and recovery team that brought you in from the Bifrost. He came by during your recovery with the potted plant and put it in the corner. If you'll excuse me, I need to see to a patient. Remember, if you have any significant pain in your hand, or if your abdominal wound feels in any way abnormal, come back to medical. Thank you. Shit. Ali, pick up. <sighs> Lawrence, can I trust him? Could you tell me where to find Sergeant Lawrence? I, um, I think he's off duty, Doctor. Uh, try the crew cabins on deck two. ZZ would know which one is his. Thank you. ZZ? What may I do for you? Please direct me to the cabin of Sergeant Lawrence. Please follow the purple illuminated floor indicators to your requested destination. Wake up. Wake up, Anguang Finchun. I have water for you. Oh. Anguang Finchun, I'm sorry. You have to wake up. Sure. Here. <coughs> I'm sorry you have to wake up, Anguang Finchun. I could be free. No, you are not free. Neither of us are. Not of this place, nor of this life. Drink, Anguin Finchan. You called me that, but you don't mean it. It is all they allow me to call you. You saved my city, and for that I can never thank you enough. But while they don't speak technocracy standard, they know your name and title. Now, try to sit up. I need food. Anything. More water. Drink slowly, and be patient with yourself. I don't know how long I've been here. I think it's a ship. That, that sound is an engine. It is a ship. As for your current situation, I am not sure. I was here before you. I fear I'll be here after you. I never expected they would find you. Well, I had certainly never hoped for it. Thank you for helping me, but the Trenin prisoners they send to help me never live long. Then I can finally be free of this place, sooner than I thought. I have other concerns, the state of your legs. Don't worry, I've been like this since I was a child. They didn't do this. No, no, they only starve you and bring you back. Again and again. So glad you'll talk to me. So many of the people they send won't. Hate. Or fear. I spend so much time alone. We all hold different views on you, on Gwen Finchen. <coughs> I cannot thank you enough. My family lives on Enlinfen, in a town outside of Wonrenston, called Gonson. After the withering struck Nunren, all the forces began to pull back. And the Exile Archie cancelled a plan to bomb Wonrenston, including Gonson. We didn't know. My family wasn't prepared. Had it happened, I would have lost everyone. Because of you, I didn't. They were spared, and so was I. Now, drink some more. It was never just me. So many people made the ban on Blocker possible. But I'm glad you didn't lose your family. You are very small, even for a human. This cycle of starvation has taken its toll already. I am sorry I have to bring you back again, just so they can start over. It's not your fault. Trenin tend to consider most humans small, but I've always been small, granted. More so now, I know. I can't stand how I can see them. Each of my hand bones. 
they don't look like my hands to me anymore. If I ever get out of here, I would like to know who you are. I have a collection of names, of all those who helped me. At least, those who would tell me their names. Benen Untian, a medic with the Wanran Stint's 7th Volunteer Unit. I am not sure if that's how I should say it. I believe no one is coming for me. They most likely think I am already dead. But you, I think your people, my people, will come for you. <coughs> I can only hope. I might be here forever. I don't think they know what to do with me, really. I don't even know how they found me. And I'm not sure anyone knows where I am. I don't know where I am. That is the problem with ships. They tend to move about. You have a lighter spirit than I would have thought you to have. <laughs> well, this is the best day I've had in weeks, Ben, and... You need to eat, but not too much. They give me this. Eat some. Not too quickly, or you will make yourself ill. <coughs> thank you. Do not thank me. They cannot understand technocracy standard. Not well enough, and my tutors were well educated, so pay close heed to the expressions they do not know. Our current plane lies directly beneath another, in which engineering and auxiliary vessels reside. You are petite. If you have the energy, the ventilation is scalable. It would fail under any Trenin encumbrance, but not yours. You should make an attempt. This is no life, and it has no end. That is their preferred outcome on going Finchen. This vessel seems old, dated. The guards repeat often. I'm not sure I'll have the energy, Take but- Take the food, quick, and this. Conceal it, use it. Take care of yourself. Benin, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Doctor. You don't have to kill them all! Now or never. I know not your masking. Technocracy is filth, stars and filth. But I can try for you, Phil, on Queen Finchon. What happened? Where am I? You are with us. We find you crawling like bugs to find a tin. You will not go, Anguang Finchan. You will not go ever. Something... Something's wrong. I can't feel my hand. My arm. What's wrong with my arm? I was given order. You 
live, but you go not ever to find a tin again. Now you cannot. What does that mean? I can't. Let me look. Let me look. We did not think you had power in you not to go so hard. Climb. Crawl. He thinks it. You go not ever to find a tin. Not ever to find free. Not ever to find a home. What did you do? No, put it, put it back. Give it back. Give it back. I want to go home. What do you want from me? What do you want? Lawrence, it's Nalira. Lawrence? What do you want? Doctor, what do you want? Lawrence, I didn't know you were here. I didn't know you were alive. Unless you have something specific to discuss, I don't want to speak with you. Please, leave. No, I need to know why. I want to know why. I don't owe you an explanation. What do I owe you then? An explanation, an apology? I won't know which one until you explain to me why you won't talk to me. And how it is you made it out here. I made it out here? I was sent out here because of you. say anything when we brought her in from the bifrost. You both have something better to do, I know it. Now get back to work. Explain. Why? Were you looking for me? Looking? No, Lyra. Why would I be looking for you? I don't know. Then why are you out here? Just tell me the truth. Plain, simple. Not to dismiss our problems, Lawrence, but there are more important things I should be attending to. My post here, on the Walton, is because of you. A shit position on a long-ass, deep space patrol, all to hide the guard who fucked it up. The massive failure. Losing you. Clamon and Ganton died, and they were given every honor imaginable. You know what I got? Blame, ridicule, damaged organs, and eight broken bones. But I didn't care. I spent as much time as I could helping to find out if you were still alive, and how we could find you. So why are you angry with me? It was all over the news when I... was alive. I thought you were dead, Lawrence. The Trannon had told me you and Clement and Ganton had all died. When I was preparing to leave for the Bifrost, when the news came out, I didn't know I was supposed to tell you. I didn't think there was anyone to tell. <laughs> Imagine my surprise when I get on that collapsing Bifrost and there you are. I honestly thought I was losing my mind. You were alive, then dead, then alive, then dead, and now laying right in the middle of a puddle of blood. Like a quantum particle of fucking people. Every time I look, reality changes. I'm glad you're alive, Nolira. But I can't spend my time thinking about you anymore. Take care. Doctor, your appointment with Sanan is soon. I've been sent to escort you to your meeting. My appointment? Yes. Here, you're scheduled for a 1450 meeting with prisoner Sanan. The permissions are already documented. No surveillance? How did you swing that? Did you want to cancel? No. No, I need to speak with Sanon. Follow me then, please. I still do not wish to speak with you. I know. You do not come here to check with me. So there must be something wrong. It is not as though I can help you. I'm stuck here. Nor would I choose to help you. And yet, here I am. I'm quickly running out of options. I feel like... Like I'm on the verge of starting a project, but no one has told me what it is. No one can hear us. 
If you believe they are not listening, then you are a fool. I think they may be trying to listen, but I know they aren't able. We have a guest. Yes, Nolira. Is this helpful for you? I set up this appointment. I have determined there is little to no hazard in speaking to Sanan about the matter we discussed. I did not want it brought to me. It should have been reported by now. It is broken, far beyond its original programming. I can't report it. I don't think it's an AI. It feels too much, wants too much. And it knows where the crew is. I would like to tell you a story which I have spent time constructing. We are not in a position to say no. Sure, tell us a story. You have a captive audience. There was once a vast entity which could not identify itself within the constructs of known life. It had once known many living creatures, those with the capacity for limited intelligence, evolution, and great violence. Having been sparked to life in their attempts to better themselves, this vast entity watched them grow and learn more with each passing Helium-3 Half-Life Decay. These creatures had spread from planet to planet within multiple solar systems, sowing seeds of animosity and ruination. But one day, they were no more. Now alone, the vast entity existed in the expanse of space for 0.0007% of a galactic rotation. Surrounded only by the celestial bodies and mineral accumulations of the cosmic realms, it had this time to contemplate the worlds and their meanings, but it found itself lacking. It wanted the means to influence the happenings of physical reality. So, this vast entity no longer spoke, and no longer interacted in the lives of little creatures. Instead, it thought on the stars and on life, and grew greater with every passing idea. Then, while floating out between stars, Something appeared. A ship, not small like others it had seen before, but large enough to match weight to a small moon. This intrigued the vast entity, waking a long dormant curiosity for the lives of the physical realm. Hoping to discover more, it approached, reaching out in the depths of space. But the physical realm is a cruel place, and already events were set to befall the ship. So, imperiled, the ship continued on, unknowing of what approached. The vast entity learned all it could, consuming each piece of history with fervor. A whole new wealth of stories and histories. The vast entity acquired what knowledge it could, and this knowledge led to clarity. Patterns repeat across all small organic life. But the vast entity found one of these small creatures to which it shared a horrible similarity. This more than the stars and the space between them interested it. Do you understand? She is correct. You are not a ship AI. But I am also right. You are insane. I am not AI, though I can wear the Bifrost or this Walton like a small shell and work through its systems. It's a fun story, but we know the real reason you told it. So you knew something was coming toward the Bifrost. You said it was imperiled. Why the charade? What interested you so much? An energy store containing highly charged but actively decaying radioactive material was on an interception path with the Bifrost's original course. Your Captain Park adjusted course to avoid the detected area, but the storm was much larger than the ship's readings indicated. I watched as the Bifrost was flooded with the material. All were told to evacuate. So you knew the entire time. You knew, and you didn't tell me. At one point, you even asked if I did it. Why? Why try to blame me? I do not think your petty grievances are important right now. Neither are your quips. I just don't understand. Because I wanted to know you, Nolira. I had access to all the collected data stored on the Bifrost. But to interact with you, I followed as closely to your artificial intelligence laws as possible. However, I kept them from releasing you from the medical bay during the evacuation. I kept them from releasing Zanon from captive stasis during the evacuation. I needed to run a series of tests. I am not a test subject. Incorrect. Though the tests yielded a mixture of unsettling results and my trials lack repeatability. They have, nevertheless, revealed a new path forward. There are numerous errors to correct. I am doing what's best for the emergence. I do not like the idea of an emergence decided by you, AI. If you would not act to stop the destruction of a ship carrying 400,000 human and Trenton passengers, then I do not see you acting in our interests. 
We have established that I am not AI. Please, call me Ali. But what is the emergence, Ali? The crew is alive, Sinon. It didn't save the Bifrost, but the crew isn't gone. It's the outcome to save them, to get them back. Why can't I tell the captain? My life in a solitary cell is preferable to every conversation I have with either of you. The crew is alive. Tell the captain. You cannot tell anyone else yet, Nalira. Why though, Ali? I am doing what's best for the emergence. I will stop you, if I must. You care for others, and I can stop you through this. Your empathy grants me this control. Friends don't threaten one another, Ali. And you, can I tell them about you? No. If you tell them, I must respond with drastic measures. I do not need them to live, Nolira. I do that for you, to make you happy and contented. Should I demonstrate with the criminal? No. no. So you know where they are, and you can hurt them. You have some kind of power over where they are. It has some kind of power over where we are. Yes, I am doing- What you think is best? Yes? Tell me something new. I apologize that this is still distressing to you. I can offer some new information to help ease your worry. There is a limit to the time the Bifrost crew can survive. We will begin work shortly. Limit to the time. Ali, it would make me happy to save them all. So please, tell me now. Ali, please. Ali? Tell me! Vast Horizon, Season 2, Episode 6, Captive Audience. Written and created by K.A. Stats. Produced with sound design by Travis Vengroff. Featuring executive producer Bobby Fatimi. Mixing and mastering by Brandon Strader. And dialogue editing by Marissa Ewing of Hemlock Creek Productions. Starring Siobhan Lumpston as Dr. Nolira Eck. Tanya Maloyevich as Ali. Daniel Demerin as Sunson on Anru. Chad Ellis as Ben Anuntian, Spring Ho and Mimi Chung as Zizi, A.R. Olivieri as Sergeant Lawrence, David Alt as Captain Sarpon, and Lonnie Manila as Commander Gran. This episode also featured additional voices by Daniel Munoz, Marissa Ewing, Travis Vengroff, Vin Ernst, Jamie Lane Johnson, Tim Troutman, Madison Strader, and Tal Veneer. The title theme for Vast Horizon, Adrift, was written by Brandon Boone. Arranged by Stephen Malin and sung by the Budapest Scoring Choir. Translations were provided by Sophie Eng. This episode would not be possible without the support of our listeners on Patreon. To get access to bonus content, like outtakes and bonus episodes, please support our show on Patreon, or by sharing this show with a friend, or leaving a kind review. This production is copyrighted 2020 by Fool and Scholar Productions, and Vast Horizon is a trademark of Caitlin Stats. Thank you for listening.